Our next speaker is Gianna Bonis Profumo, and she will be speaking about mixed methods uh, to enable a nuanced understanding of gender pathway from agriculture to nutrition outcomes in Timor-Leste. Thank you so much, and um, apologies for the mouthful of the title. <laughs> So thanks to the Academy for the opportunity to present uh, this today, which is part of my PhD studies. Um, and so these are the co-authors um, of this presentation are my two main supervisors, Natasha Stacy and Julie Brimblecombe. Um, and it's been funded through Charles Darwin University and the BCFM Foundation, um, and done in partnership and collaboration with the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries of Timor-Leste and uh, Catholic Relief Services in Timor-Leste. So what's the issue? In rural Timor, the majority of the population are smallholder farmers who raise livestock as a livelihood strategy. However, diets consistently lack protein intake and child malnutrition is worryingly high, with one in two children stunted. But we know that um, in low and middle income countries, women are the key mediators in the pathways between agriculture inputs, intra-household resource allocation, and child nutrition not just the key stories, they are key mediators, yeah? So we said to explore this, um, so we said to explore this issue from the women's empowerment pathway from uh, livestock production to dietary outcomes. So this study aims to examine gender relations in agriculture, particularly women's agency related to livestock husbandry and sale, as well as to animal source foods purchases and consumption among semi-subsistence farmers in rural Timor-Leste. So the study setting was in four least developed villages in the eastern parts of this post-conflict country. Um, and we engaged CDNEP participants, which is a nutrition-sensitive agriculture program uh, that focused on nutrition education with some support on agriculture diversification. And it also had a, uh, included the chicken vaccination campaign, which targeted um, mothers with young children. And just to clarify, this study, it's not an impact evaluation of this program. It was it was much, much larger, so it was just used as an engagement platform to assess these issues. So this is a mixed method study, and it's going to be, I'm going to argue a lot about that today. That's not the topic of my PhD, but. Um, so we used a quantitative um, component, which was a cross-sectional survey with mothers and uh, male adults living in the same household. And uh, we used the abbreviated Women's Empowerment in Agriculture Index, which I'll refer to the AYI from now on. And we also expanded, we expanded this survey and we added additional questions to unpack a bit more about uh, livestock. Then we also did um, seasonal uh, production diversity uh, of livestock and agriculture and also dietary diversity of mothers and children. From the qualitative side, we use semi-structured interviews with mothers, fathers, relatives, and also some key informants to really understand a little bit the social norms around decision making and around the um, intra-household allocation of animal stores foods. And so we use this sequential design uh, to support the interpretation of the quantitative um, uh, results through qualitative analysis. Very briefly, the sampling strategy, we ended up selecting four out of 49 um, villages that had the program, and we stratified by district and by location, and we selected, uh, randomly selected 50 mothers in each of those four villages. Um, and also we obtained um, ethics clearance both in Australia and Timor-Leste. Okay, so what did we find? So in terms of the gender relations in agriculture, uh, the way results show individual empowerment scores um, are showing this chart. So we see that the data show the percentage of men and women that achieved the adequacy cutoff uh, that was set for each of these indicators following the AYI methodology. So in other words, this chart reflects the percentage of each indicator in which women, whoops, excuse me, oh, in which women and men achieved um, adequacy. And so what we see is that um, men and women, actually, according to this methodology, are um, uh, empowered or achieved uh, um, uh, their threshold on productive decisions, assets ownership, and the uses of income. Um, and so, um, yeah, so they, they suggest that they're empowered in those domains. 
And so just to make a comment that the, the group membership uh, indicator is obviously biased because the um, program was not a group-based uh, group delivery, so that, those are the proportion of mothers that acknowledge their participation in the, in the program. So this applied to agricultural activities in general, and now we'll dive in into the livestock results. So in terms of livestock uh, husbandry and sale, we find that most of men and women um, own, report owning jointly all their uh, animals, irrespective of size. And that also happens with the majority of uh, families, both men and women, reporting that they make the decision jointly with their partners or with other family household members. However, we found that um, decision making is nuanced. So when we further unpack decision maker on livestock production, we find that um, women had more autonomy to sell eggs and chickens than pigs, as this chart shows uh, by men. And so who 28% uh, report that, um, that the woman, their wife, is the final decision maker to sell eggs and 11% for, for chickens. And when we look at what women say, we find that 70% um, um, reporting that they, you know, that their husband would, would get upset if they sold their pig before, uh, if without prior consultation with them, which went down to 50% for chickens, and then it kept going down for some uh, food expenditures as their value decreased. So those are the nuances that we're going to be unpacking. Um, in terms of husband um, livestock sale and uses, so we found that poultry, um, at least in this sample, is used mostly for income and consumption and uh, that pigs satisfy mostly cultural requirements and income to a smaller degree. And then for the larger animals, like buffaloes and goats, um, they mostly reserve for ceremonial purposes or cere uh, ceremonial feasts. So just to give a bit of context, the majority of households own chickens and pigs, um, only a third own buffaloes and 46% goats. And in terms of income, we found that um, a third of women and a half of men always decide on how to use the income from livestock um, sales. Okay, so now we're gonna look at how uh, using income for animal source foods. Um, we found that small household expenditure um, was reported as a sole domain for women, um, for half of the respondents, um, however, during the interviews, um, it was quite clear that the, you know, many women consulted or asked for permission to their husbands uh, prior using um, funds to buy higher value foods like eggs or fish. And as you can see in these two um, quotes, and yeah, and also it was very, very clear that income generation is the male's responsibility and is framed this way. Um, and that the priority is using available funds for ensuring a rise for food security. And, um, and some women, only a minority, but some explained that um, there were you know, concerns about gender-based violence uh, regarding some of these processes of, of negotiation. And yeah. Okay, so in terms of consumption and diets, we found no gender differences in the animal source foods allocation uh, within households, and we tried to assess that by asking men, by asking women, by observing during the lengthy periods of field work. However, we didn't uh, measure um, men's intake, um, but I think it's pretty clear, at least in those areas, that that does not happen. It's not the common practice. However, we have very literature in the country that, um, that says, explains this. Um, and then also in the, uh, in the surveys, mothers reported prioritizing eggs to children, which was corroborated by the dietary data. So across the four data points, we did the average um, of the type of foods that they ate the day before, and we see how uh, in blue, children consumed pretty much double than the amount of eggs than their mothers. So that triangulates our funding. And then we also see this pattern of um, slightly more animal source food consumption for children compared to their mothers across the seasons, and that's, def and, that, and that's due to the egg differential and a little bit of the dairy products uh, intake. And we can see how the consumption is um, seasonal for animal source foods, and that's the average of all the villages. So something that is very clear to me, and that it's mothers. Children have very poor diets, but mothers have also very poor diets, and that's something that perhaps wasn't that clear, and yeah, and this shows that yeah, only 50% of them achieve the dietary diversity threshold of, um, of the MDDW. So, 
to conclude. <laughs> so we conclude that similar levels, uh, that men and women have similar levels of empowerment in production, assets, and income as measured by the AYI. Also, that households are the farming unit in Timor-Leste as the a joint decision-making and, and ownership of resources uh, indicated. Um, also, that women have higher autonomy in small livestock management, um, and particularly that decision-making on income uh, and uses for animal source food is nuanced and informed by traditional no uh, notions of gender norms um, that frame income generation as a male's domain um, and that lowers the agency um, of some women. Um, and just quickly, so there are definitely resources, poverty, it is a structural barrier to access quality diets. So what does this mean? The AYI is a valuable tool, but it's limited to assess decision making between men and women, particularly in collectivist uh, cultures such as Timor Leste, where the family and, uh, and the household are so important. So when we complemented this um, tool with further inquiry and qualitative methods, we found nuanced process of negotiation emerged that the survey alone was an, uh, that the survey alone was unable to capture. Um, and so, yeah, so we think that mixed method studies provide a more accurate portrayal of gender pathways from agriculture to nutrition outcomes. And I'd just do like to uh, express my sincere appreciation to the many people, the participants, uh, the, my research team who were amazing, uh, organizations and people that's made this um, research a reality. So, obrigada, Baraka. <laughs>